Joining me now, Amy Holmes, political analyst, a conservative commentator, and Haley and Healy Baumgartner, a senior press representative for the Trump campaign. Welcome to you both. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having us. Nice to have you here. I want to focus on what Donald Trump said about um, um, this uh, Kim Jong Un and North Korea because that's what everyone's talking about this morning. So, so Amy, remember back in 2007, then candidate Obama said he would be willing to sit down with the leaders of Iran, Syria, and Venezuela. Is Donald Trump pulling a page from Mr. Obama? Well, that's very interesting because uh, then Senator Obama also said he'd be willing to meet without preconditions with North Korea and Iran. And at the time, Hillary Clinton said that she thought that position was naive and, well, she said irresponsible and frankly naive. But clearly, Hillary Clinton forgave President Obama because she campaigned for him and then became his Secretary of State, advancing his agenda on the world stage. Conservatives, I'm sure, are going to be very unhappy with Donald Trump's position on this. But uh, Donald Trump supporters, I think we'll put it in the context of, look, you know, uh, you saw President Obama make the same type of pledge. So why is Donald Trump getting so much criticism for it now? Interesting. So, so Haley, I want you to listen to something else that Donald Trump said about Kim Jong-un back in January. Here it is. You got to give him credit. How many young guys, he was like 26 or 25 when his father died, take over these tough generals and all of a sudden, you know, it's pretty amazing when you think of it. How does he do that? Even though it is a culture and it's a cultural thing, he goes and he takes over and he's the boss. It's incredible. He wiped out the uncle. He wiped out this one, that one. So just to refresh our viewers' memory, oh, um, Kim executed his uncle, he, he, he executed his aunt, he executed his military chief, he executed his vice premier. Um, what was Mr. Trump trying to say, Healy? Well, I think top line, you know, Mr. Trump's point is that he wants to keep an open dialogue and repair relationships with world leaders. But what was he trying to say in January at his campaign rally? Well, I'm not going to speculate on what he meant specifically by those points, but generally speaking, you know, he wants to have an open dialogue to repair relationships with leaders throughout the world. I know, but... Uh, Carol, I think I can answer that question. Okay. I think Donald Trump was trying to project strength. He has said similarly, you know, uh, he's complimented Vladimir Putin in similar terms. Uh, I could answer Donald Trump's question, which is how does a guy that young get to be leader of a, a closed country called the Hermit Kingdom? It's called dynasty, and it's called tyranny, and it's called murdering your opponents. That's the simple answer. But I think that what Donald Trump was trying to do was uh, sort of sound like a strong man himself. I don't like it. Uh, I, I hope that he refines his point of view. Yeah, and I'm just, well, Keely, you can't um, give us any more guidance on this. You're the... You are the senior press representative for Mr. Trump. I am, exactly. And what I'm telling you is that top line, you know, his one of his biggest goals is to repair relationships with leaders throughout the world. Okay, then. Um, Amy? Um, Yes. The, Clinton camp, the Clinton camp fired back that um, Donald Trump is willing to sit down with Kim Jong-un, but he's not really willing to talk very much to David Cameron from Great Britain. Um, is that fair? Right. No, it's not, obviously, because uh, Hillary Clinton, as we you know, were discussing earlier, went on to support uh, then-Senator Obama in his uh, election efforts to become President of the United States when President Ob Senator Obama had made similar pledges of no preconditions, willing to sit down, and even his foreign policy advisor said that any great nation and a great president should be willing to open up these uh, avenues of dialogue. Uh, in terms of criticizing uh, Donald Trump about David Cameron, again, I think that's fair when we saw that President Obama just went to the UK, lectured the Brits on Brexit, and said he, he insulted the Brits by saying, if you don't stay in the EU, I'm going to put you to the back of the queue. Well, interestingly enough, polling data when it came to UK sentiments on leaving the EU, uh, support for leaving went up after President Obama's threat. So, so Haley, I want to ask you about something else. Donald Trump is expected to meet with um, former Secretary of State Henry Kissinger. He's expected to do that later today. Why Henry Kissinger and not another Secretary of State? Haley? I'm sorry, was that a question to me? Oh, yes. Sorry yeah. about that. Mm -hmm. I had a little feedback. No worries. Um, you know, I, Mr. Trump uh, regularly meets with experts and highly respected individuals, and, you know, he values their input and their feedback. 
And, and what do you suppose they'll talk about in this meeting? Do you know, Healy? You know, I'm, I'm, I can't confirm or deny the meeting. I do know that Mr. Trump, you know, values feedback of highly respected individuals and experts. And, you know, he will have those conversations as he deems fit. Um, how, how do you feel, Amy, about this meeting with Henry Kissinger? Hey, listen, the more that Donald Trump can learn about the world and foreign policy, I think is better. Uh, and Mr. Kissinger is, you know, very well respected among uh, many foreign policy experts, although, you know, people have their criticisms of him as well uh, as being a realist when it comes to foreign policy. So, again, if it's a little bit educational for the Republican presumptive nominee, I'm for it. All right, Amy Holmes, Healy Baumgartner, thanks to both of you. I still come to the newsroom with